All right, good morning. And welcome to the Open Shift on Azure session here in the pavilion, or the partner theater here. Uh, my name is Harold Wong. I'm with Microsoft, and I am part of the team that manages the global partnership with Red Hat. And we do a lot of work uh, with Red Hat on OpenShift running in Azure. I'm going to hand it over to my teammate, Jim, for him to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had to say it. Uh, yeah, my name is Jim Zimmerman. I'm a principal SE in uh, Microsoft. Um, I'm helping lead the, the managed OpenShift uh, offering that we announced yesterday at the keynote. And uh, I figured I'd go over a few things that we covered yesterday for those that missed it. Um, we announced a jointly managed uh, OpenShift on Azure. So basically, this is going to be managed by both Red Hat and Microsoft as a first party service. Um, so you'll get uh, you know better support, and uh, you'll be able to uh, provision things very quickly. <clears throat> um, we also have launched uh, Windows Container Support in OpenShift uh, as a private preview. <laughs> Patrick did that. Um, and then uh, we also have OpenShift support in Azure Stack. And so Harold's going to show a demo of that working. Uh, it's pretty cool for those of you that you want to run uh, a private cloud on-prem. And then uh, lastly, we'll, uh, we'll go over the Open Service Broker for Azure that runs on OpenShift. So basically, a service broker is uh, a way to provision Azure first-party services from within OpenShift. So I'll uh, hand it back to Harold, and you can go through a few things. OK, so I figured we'd kind of walk through some of the deployment options, because if you are super interested in the managed or jointly managed OpenShift offering in Azure, it is only in private preview. Even the, the uh, Windows container support in OpenShift is preview, right? So they're not GA yet. So if you want to be running OpenShift in Azure today, what are your options? And so we have different ways that you can test out, you can try out OpenShift in Azure. There's something called a test drive. So if you don't have OpenShift already, maybe you don't even own Azure, right? But you're interested in running and trying it out for four hours. You can go to our website, to the Marketplace website, do a search for OpenShift. You can find the test drive, and then you can deploy it. You don't have no accounts necessary, just your email. It'll run for four hours. You'll have the ability to test it out, run it, see how it works. If you like it, then you can contact Microsoft and or Red Hat and kind of get going. The other one is if you already own Azure, you already own OpenShift, and you want to deploy it easily into the Azure environment, you can go to the Azure Marketplace once again. And there is an offer there where you answer some questions, input in your Red Hat subscription information, whether it's your username, password, or activation key org ID, as well as your pool ID. And then it will go deploy a OpenShift uh, cluster for you. It will have three master nodes, three infra nodes, and then you get to select how many app nodes that you want to deploy. All right, so then you wait about an hour 45 minutes to an hour or so, and come back, and you'll have your 10-node, 20-node cluster up and running, ready to go. All right, another way to deploy things is if you don't want that uh, opinionated install, but you want to install a OpenShift cluster with your own parameters, we do have what we call Azure Resource Manager templates, right? ARM templates that are available. There's the ARM templates directly from Red Hat that's part of the reference architecture. We also have, we being Microsoft or me, Harold, uh, have uh, GitHub repos on the github.com, Microsoft, and then we have OpenShift Origin and OpenShift Container Platform repos so that you can actually go deploy your own cluster and have the ability to customize different things. Like, oh, I want, uh, I don't care about HA right now. I only want to deploy a simple cluster to test out something. So you can select one master, one infra node, and one app node. I want to deploy metrics, or I don't want to deploy metrics. Right? So there's a bunch of configuration options that you have in terms of deploying using these templates. The other thing you could also do, right? flexibility, options. You can go deploy your own VMs into Azure. By the way, that ARM template deploys all the VMs for you, sets up all the storage, all the networking, right? everything, so that when the template is done, you have a fully functional cluster. The other option is to use Ansible playbooks natively. So you just want to deploy everything yourself. 
you can create your own Ansible playbooks that deploy the Azure VMs, deploys the VNets, the networking and everything. Or you can deploy, somehow deploy all the VMs and the infrastructure in Azure and then run the Ansible playbooks to install OpenShift. So there is all kinds of options available. The last one is the one that will be coming soon, right? The ability to use that managed OpenShift. And at that point, you can use the Azure CLI, right? If you were at the keynote with Scott Guthrie and Brendan yesterday, then you saw that you could do AZ OpenShift create, right? And literally create an OpenShift cluster using the Azure CLI command. That process, hopefully, by the time it GAs, will take like five to 10 minutes to deploy a fully functional 10, 20, 30 node cluster. Right? So that, that's exciting. Right? So that's all we really have in terms of slides. Uh, what we really wanted to do was do demos and then also get questions or you know, answer your questions. So if you have questions for the few of you that are here, feel free to ask and we'll take those questions. So what I have up and running right now is multiple OpenShift environments. I've got OpenShift Origin. I also have OpenShift Container Platform running. And what I'll show you first is in my Azure portal, so this is my Azure portal, I've got an environment that has uh, quite a few disks, a bunch of VMs that host my cluster. So if we come over here and look, you can see, what is it, about a 10 node cluster or something like that? Masters, infra nodes, app nodes. And that cluster right now is this cluster. So I've logged into the cluster already just to save time. Kind of hard to hold the mic and type too much stuff all at the same time. But the key here that I wanted to show is integration with Azure. All right, so if I wanted to deploy an application that uses persistent storage, where does that persistent storage get created, right? Is it ether? Is it out in outer space? No, it's a, using Azure disks. So what I want to do right here is let's just create a new project. We'll call it a demo. And then if I go to this demo project, we'll create just something simple, right? I don't want to do something that takes too long. There is this cake PHP example, real simple. If I do cake PHP, MySQL, step through this, and just let it go create, go to overview, you'll see that this is starting to spin up a MySQL database. But if I look at storage, it is trying to provision storage, a PVC called MySQL. Ultimately, that will generate a disk in Azure that gets mounted to the VM. Right? And I just want to quickly show that, so hopefully this won't take too long for it to provision. Come on. Storage. Sure, it's not going to work fast when I'm trying to do a demo, right? While we're waiting, are there any questions? <laughs> okay, so while we're waiting for that to create, I'll show you Azure Stack as well. All right, so I've ha I have an Azure Stack environment. Uh, we'll ignore that failure one. But I have OpenShift Origin running in Azure Stack. You can see this is in my Azure Stack environment. It's not in Azure Full. But I've got an Origin cluster that's deployed over there. And if I come back over here, this other tab has origin, and you can see it does say OpenShift origin. If you look at the URL, it is pointing to cloudapp.stackpoc.com. So it is not an Azure, like Azure commercial environment, right? Otherwise, it would look like uh, cloudapp.azure.com. But same, similar concept here. If I show you, actually, I probably should. So what I have over here in this particular environment is CNS. Right? So I've got cloud native storage integrated with this cluster because in Azure Stack today, the cloud provider does not function. So I can't do disk attach, but I do need persistent storage. So if I want to run persistent storage, 
uh, you can deploy CNS as part of your origin or container platform cluster. And if you're doing container platform, one of the things that I think was announced or will be announced this week, because it's already working, is your uh, OpenShift entitlements. If you're doing CNS, also include CNS. So your Gluster entitlements are part of your OpenShift entitlements. You don't have to buy Gluster separately. I, I think that's cool. Yeah, I don't know if it's announced, but it's working. Because <laughs> I, I did deploy it, and it does work. It didn't ask me for my entitlements. All right, so I'll go back to my container platform. And you can see that it provisioned a, a PVC. And can you hold the control key down? Thank you. <laughs> hard, hard, to, hard, hard to do two things with one hand holding a mic. But if you look here, there is a PVC. If you look at the name of that PVC, right, it's uh, 424A something and ends in ADC. If I go back to my portal over here and go back up where the disks are, let me refresh this real fast. We ought to be able to see a disk called Kubernetes PVC, what was it, 424 ending in ADC. Right, so that disk got created automatically on the back end and was mounted to a VM called, so it got mounted to node one, right? And that's the one that then is running this particular uh, workload. So if you look, you'll see that the the pod is spinning up, and if we wait another minute or so, I'm sure that thing will go live, right? But in Azure Stack, because we don't have access to the cloud provider, we're using CNS. So you can deploy CNS. The entitlements are automatically there. Don't want to get too engrossed into that, but just want to make sure everybody understands. You can or you do have the flexibility of deploying OpenShift origin and container platform in Azure Stack as well as in Azure. Azure Commercial, Azure Gov, Azure Germany, right? All the different sovereign clouds. And take advantage of all the integrations with Azure or Azure Stack. And so uh, I'll go ahead and turn this back over to Jim to talk about some of the OSBA integrations as well. So we're probably the only people that know what OSBA means. Um, and I noticed that on our, our title, it says OSBA and OpenShift. OSBA is uh, Open Service Broker for Azure, is what it is. So. Every, is anybody here familiar with the service catalog and OpenShift? Okay, so basically what we did is we took uh, our open service broker that works, uh, it works in Kubernetes, uh, Cloud Foundry, and OpenShift, same, same binary basically. And we ported that to make it work with uh, OpenShift. And as you can see here, we have, uh, we have about 15 services integrated now to OSBA. Um, and so you can see that here we have uh, our Cosmos DB um, service, our Azure database for MySQL, Postgres. These are really useful for those of you that don't want to manage data in a cluster. Um, I don't know too many companies that actually want to manage their database this is inside of OpenShift or inside of Kubernetes. Um, so this is really useful to be able to um, provision our first party services from within OpenShift and then it automatically creates a, a connection string, a secret, if you will, for your developers to use inside of the cluster. So it's very easy to provision these services for your developers without them even having to call you up basically and say, oh, can you set me up a, a SQL server for me? Um, so anyway, I'm gonna take you through a, a couple of these right now. Um, you see here we have, uh, you know, that's the SQL server I was talking about, Azure Search, Service Bus. Um, I'll take you through a Cosmos DB one. This is one of our more popular ones. The Cosmos DB has different API shims on top of it. So you can do MongoDB, uh, Graph API, Table API. Um, I think we also have Cassandra coming too. Yeah, I think it's in private preview or whatever. But anyway, you get the idea. So, so I'm going to go here and uh, walk through this wizard. One thing I love about OpenShift is that it takes our metadata that we spit back to it and creates this awesome UI on the fly. Um, it makes it makes OSBA look actually really good. Um, so I'm gonna 
I'm going to type with one hand while I hold the mic. <laughs> Z Cosmos. All right. So, and then here um, we have this metadata that we spit back to uh, the service catalog that automatically creates these drop downs. So, do I want to allow access from Azure? I'm going to go ahead and enable that. Uh, allow access from the portal. These are just, you know, different things that, uh, different parameters that we offer. Uh, I could put an, an IP range, so I only want a, a specific IP to be able to access this uh, Mongo service. I'm going to just go ahead and X that out because I don't need that. And then I can say what location I want it. So um, obviously, I want it to be in the same region as my OpenShift cluster, so I'm going to go ahead and put East US. And then if I wanted, I could have a defined resource group so I can put all my services in one area. It's more for organizational purposes, but for here, I'm not going to actually uh, put a resource group in. And then here, this will create a binding. So once the service is actually provisioned, it's going to go create. It's going to create a binding. It's going to grab all your connection string properties, create a secret in the cluster, and then that secret can be used by your applications. Let me go ahead and do that. And uh, no errors. That's awesome. Hey, that's weird. I'm I logged in as you. <laughs> I was wondering why all my uh, settings weren't there. Yeah, yeah, so um, this is the managed cluster. So Red Hat OpenShift on Microsoft Azure is why you see that. Um, and uh, it looks like the internet's not being uh, very friendly. It, yeah, internet died, awesome. Yeah, are you connected to Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's, it's dead. <laughs> awesome, all right, well, we have another question. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so maybe I'll pull out my iPhone and we'll uh, we'll we'll show you how to connect to my hotspot here. Everything went down. Yeah, everything went down. Okay, so anyway, I can finish this. There wasn't really much more to show there, but um, anyway, so what's going on in the background? Is it created the Cosmos service, um, created a secret, and then you can give that secret path to your developers to put in their uh, pod spec for their OpenShift deployment. And then all of a sudden now, when they deploy their app, they can use an actual first party service from the cluster instead of creating their own system. Yep. Oh, well, back up. Uh, I, I don't know what I would really show anyway. <laughs> all right. I don't see the project here. Yeah, let's not worry about it. So, um, anybody have any questions? <laughs> it may use Azure today. All right, good, okay. You don't count. You have to use it for your job. I want to use OpenShift. All right, okay. Same two people, this is weird. Uh, so, if you don't use OpenShift, you probably didn't know about the service catalog then, right? So, um, what I would say is when you do do look at using OpenShift, the service catalog is awesome because then your developers can actually provision services on their own and you don't have to manage it. So it makes it really useful than giving them the keys to like Azure, AWS or whatever. Um, you can control their access through OpenShift. It's actually pretty nice. So. One interesting thing about that open service broker for Azure is I'm running my origin cluster in my Azure stack, right? I kind of mentioned that earlier. I also installed the open service broker for Azure in my origin cluster running on Azure stack. And I can deploy Azure related services up in Azure that connect with my containers or my pods that are running in cluster. Right? So that integration in the hybrid model works very well as well. So we're just about out of time, 50 seconds left. Any other questions or comments or jokes you want to tell? <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for your time.